the legacy of Joe Fortes is the ways in which black pioneers fought a variety of, of, of difficulties, of exclusion, to try to make a life for themselves. Joe Fortes was born in Trinidad and moved to Liverpool, England as a young man. He worked as a seaman and eventually came to Vancouver in 1885 and was a bartender. After years of volunteering his time at English Bay Beach, he became the city's first paid lifeguard and was a swimming instructor. So he, he was really a man before his time in teaching people of all ages, all gender, how to swim. Joe touched me by the back of my bathing suit and he told me how to move my arms and how to move my legs. I had a rowboat and he would parole up and down uh, the beach certain times when he wasn't teaching lessons, but he always had an eye on that beach. So the English Bay Beach was his beat, so to speak. He was also a special constable by evening and he walked the streets of English Bay and patrolled and kept order. Parts of Fortes are still all around Vancouver. A drinking fountain in the West End was carved in his memory after his death. His porch chair and a handkerchief he gifted to someone are nestled in the Museum of Vancouver Archives. We have uh, Joe's original oil lamp, very well preserved. We also have the certificate that was given to Joe by the City of Vancouver in 1910 in appreciation for all the work that he did at English Bay Beach. Although Fortes was adored and loved by many, some in Vancouver's black community say there's another way to see his story. What I see here is, is a Vancouver, white Vancouver, patting itself on the back uh, for being extremely generous to a black man as if, as if it's, it's some exception that he was a capable black man. Was he really integrated or was he only accepted to the extent that he was able to save lives? And so I see this, this hero, I see Vancouver recognizing him as a hero, but I think his story is a lot more complicated. Francis points out that Fortes died just as Vancouver's black community, Hogan's Alley, was forming. So there aren't many accounts of him interacting with other black people. She says in old photos, she sees him alone or pictured with white people at the beach. I see isolation. I see social isolation. I see the ways in which he's a token of something. When we're the only one in a space, there's often room for inclusion because we do not represent a collective threat. But as soon as we form communities of us, that's usually when we get targeted. What can we learn from Joe's life? I think from Joe, we can learn how much you can achieve just by uh, being true to who you are and offering your assistance and your kindness. And that's what I see in Joe, a man that came and despite the odds, reached out to the people, many of whom he knew were, uh, uh, had definitely anti-black racism and white supremacy was reigning supreme. But he never gave into that despite his own personal hardship. I think this is a story that should inspire us all uh, uh, to the kind of society we should be aspiring to be. People aren't done recognizing Fortes's legacy. The city has declared February 9th Joe Fortes Day, and the Vancouver Historical Society plans to honor his life with a plaque. Ashley Moliere, CBC News, Vancouver.